Um, thank you for having me here today. I represent um, Bruce Tompkin over there and John as well as uh, Rod Jones, which a lot of you would probably know. And what I'd like to present today is some of the recent um, consumer research that we've done in Indonesia for stone fruit or summer fruit. Um, what we looked at is the preferences and the drivers of liking for stone fruit um, in this market. And um, I think we've got some really exciting and um, interesting results to, to share. We've just finished up, um, I think it was last weekend, was it Bruce, the um, pear? work as well so hopefully we can present that to you at some stage as well. So in terms of um, the stone fruit um, project that, that we just did recently, what we were looking at is to really understand that appeal and the preference um, of different summer fruits. So we looked at peaches, nectarines and plums and we looked at firm versus soft um, textures or examples of those. We wanted to look at the impact of, of texture, sweetness and, and crunch as particular attributes um, of interest and understand where discrepancies lied between what the expectations or the ideal levels of these attributes were and what they were tasting in the Australian examples of the fruit that we supplied. We also wanted to understand the purchase behaviour, not only their current purchase behaviour and preferences, but also the possible future um, behaviour in terms of whether our fruit was there to purchase, and also what really triggered purchase and what held them back in terms of purchase as well. In terms of the methodology, we had 150 Indonesian consumers um, come into the test. It was a central location test um, in Jakarta, um, for, so 60 minute session. They came in, we um, did some questionnaires around just their basic usage and attitudes first and foremost, and then we got into the, the fruit evaluation and I'll show you a couple of pictures of how that worked in a moment. Um, once the fruit evaluation was done, we looked at things like pricing expectations, as well as colour preference and uh, cooking and packaging type preferences as well. Uh, we spoke to, in terms of just the age range, 18 to about 45 plus, but most of the individuals that came along were aged between 18 and 44. Um, we had a female-male split of about 65-35, uh, which is pretty um, representative of the fruit buyer, so we're very happy with that. Um, they were all main or joint grocery buyers of fruit for their families or themselves and we had a bit of a split between frequent summer fruit consumers and occasional just allowed us to look um, at detail within the, in the data um, so that was all um, recorded so in terms of the booths when we do um, sensory testing such as this in other countries we don't have the kind of state-of-the-art facilities that we do have in this country and we'd have to kind of build um, those as we go um, in jakarta we have done um, a few tests already um, so it's a pretty smooth um, operation and having people like bruce there to, to help us um, in terms of fruit preparation and, and getting things organized is also a really big help um, so we had these um, tests happen in in February um, of this year and, and it went very smoothly um, which was good. In terms of the product samples, so the fruit that we were testing with the Indonesian consumers um, this time around was the white and yellow peach, the white and yellow nectarine, uh, the dark plum and the dapple plum. And in terms of how this was presented to the consumers, what they received is um, a number of different trays, each tray representing um, a fruit type. And on this tray there was two samples there, so a firmer sample and a soft sample. Um, and having the team there doing the measurements um, as we went and making sure that there was enough fruit to represent these um, different attributes um, was all well in hand as well. So the fruit was really, it was kind of um, given to the consumers in a, in a blind way. They did the same um, questionnaire for, for each and indicated their preference as well. So in terms of the findings, the first thing that I thought um, I would share with you is just a little bit about the nature of the Indonesian consumer. So before we go into the fruit um, evaluation itself, um, just a little bit of a portrait of information of who we spoke to here. What we found is that nearly all Indonesian consumers um, eat bananas and apples and pears, as well as melons and dragon fruit. Um, plums are actually consumed currently by nearly 80%. Of Indonesians, so they're quite familiar with, with plums, um, but about by 57% um, of peaches and nectarines only by about 3%. So when you see the, the uh, reaction of the Indonesian consumers around, particularly around 
nectarines. It's a very, very exciting opportunity. The colour of the skin is the most important um, attribute when they're purchasing this fruit. So, Jeff, my ears pricked up when you mentioned that about Korea and, and choosing based on colour. Uh, it's quite similar in the Indonesian market. And this is then followed by the aroma. So in that purchase, um, I guess, um, behaviour, picking the fruit up, looking at the, um, looking at the aroma, thinking about the firmness in hand, then about the shape, the flesh colour and the size. So I don't know if that's also quite similar to the cream market, but I think it's a really important learning in terms of how we present fruit and what fruit is actually going over to this market. In terms of um, what really drives um, fruit consumption in Indonesia. This is really all about um, the health and the nutritional benefits. Um, also around that the fruit is, is versatile um, and you know, taste kind of coming in after that. So this is just a stated response from, from Indonesians as to why, what they're looking for from their fruit um, purchase and consumption. And in terms of what holds them back, so what we would call kind of the barriers, currently it's around expense. So I guess the first thing that kind of cries out to us here is we need to do that pricing research and make sure that when we do get our fruit over there that it's in a, within an acceptable price range for these consumers. The other thing currently holding them back is the fear of sh short shelf life of fruit. So something maybe they purchase the fruit and then it kind of spoils within a couple of days. So there may be some education um, there in terms of the correct storage of fruit or how do we get it to them in enough time so they have a little bit more time um, to, to enjoy that fruit and just the lack of variety available. So if there's ever a, you know, a, a request for fruit from Australia, there it is. So did um, Indonesian consumers like the Australian summer fruit and which varieties did they prefer? So I'm going to take you into a little bit of data now. I can guide you through these results. The good news is, and here what we're looking at is the peaches, and what we've got is the white peaches here and the yellow peaches here. Then we've got the hard and soft firmness, hard and soft firmness. We've got an overall liking score. We do this on a line scale, it's out of 10. And the Indonesian benchmark, that we have from all of the work that we've done, it's about a 5.9. So you're looking at six and above is, is quite a good score. Um, they're definitely acceptable. And, and then a weighted purchase intent, we're looking at, we want to have numbers there, percentages of 23 or over. So as you can see, just from a first glance, these fruit have been well accepted and have been well enjoyed. Um, and both the, the white and the, yellow, and, and the yellow, but with the white variety being slightly better liked. So really it's, it's ahead of the, the yellow um, peaches there. In terms of when you look at the yellow peaches from a hard to a soft firmness um, perspective, you've got a significant preference for hard with yellow. So in terms of the white, it was really driven by sweetness and the firmness and the anticipated purchase intent there, if they were available, was stated at four times a month. Whereas for the yellow, this was driven by the firmness first and then the overall taste and the anticipated purchase there was three times a month. If we look at the nectarines, and remember only 3% um, of Indonesian consumers have um, tried or, or consume nectarines, so I think there's a lot of um, possibilities here. Again, all of the, um, well, the, the white nectarines here have, have done particularly well and have done better than the yellow um, nectarines. So you can see very high scores coming through for, the, for liking as well as for their purchase intent um, from the, the white nectarines and lower scores here for the yellow. In terms of the white, again, similar to um, with the peaches, really driven by sweetness as well as um, the, the firmness of the fruit and anticipating buying about four times a month if they're available to them at an acceptable price. Whereas for the yellow, driven by the firmness, so not so much the sweetness there and anticipated purchase if they're available at an acceptable price of three times a month. So definitely the white nectarines um, with the advantage there. In terms of plums, both the dark and the dapple were appealing to consumers with some really great and high liking scores here and some very solid um, purchase intent scores as well. But just no difference between whether dark or dapple and no real difference between whether hard or soft. And we always try to look for differences and, and pull those out and get excited about them. But to be honest, these are all such strong results. It's kind of good to have options. 
So in terms of the peaches and nectarines, we looked at sweetness as being the key driver um, for those fruit. But here what we find with the plums, and we know the Indonesians have a bit more experience with the plums, it's all about that balance of sweetness and sourness, more so than just that unidimensional sweetness. So, how often would they purchase the, the fruit and how much would they be willing to pay? The first thing to mention was we, we put something in around um, willingness to purchase Australian grown fruit and we had 97% of the Indonesians that we spoke to that were keen to do that. So probably or definitely would buy. And that's, I think, a really key um, and fantastic result to see. Um, then we bring price in. So we had 75,000, 120,000 or 160,000 rupiah per kilo. And what we found is where the benchmark kind of kicks in is between 120 and 160,000. So we're getting some early indications of where the tipping point is per kilo um, and what price that, that needs to be. So I'm sure there'll be people in the team that are running off with, with those results and doing a little bit of volumetric um, estimations. At uh, just a, an extra little bit of information, at this price here, so the 75,000, um, our Indonesian consumers said that they'll probably buy once a week um, this fruit, um, once a fortnight at 120 and once a month at 160. So also kind of factors that, that come into play when thinking about what price the fruit um, should, be, should be at. So in terms of colour and, and shape, we saw that white um, or, or red flesh, so white flesh for the peaches and the nectarines would, was um, preferred and for the plums a red flesh was preferred. There may be something around um, the, the perception of sweetness um, with that but definitely with um, the skin colour. So this is for peaches and nectarines and the preferred skin colour was by far um, that red colour very coming through very loud and clear there. Again we remember that in this market they really pick the fruit based on the appearance of it. So this is a very important um, result in terms of thinking about what fruit should be supplied into this market. And similarly for plums. So even though they liked the, that dapple plum as well as the, the darker plum, just as much as each other on tasting, in terms of that appearance and, and picking fruit, they want to see that red the red colour of, of the skin. In terms of shape, it was significantly by far preferred to have that uh, rounder shape. I think it was about, we got, even got them to size it up as well, so about 60, it was 60 millimetres in diameter. And before we went into the, the market and did this research, we talked a lot about um, you know, our hypotheses of whether the consumers would like to prefer to eat this fruit with skin off, on or off. And we found that predominantly and significantly, um, Indian and Asian consumers would prefer to eat with the skin on. So that was, that was an interesting finding as well. So how will they incorporate the summer fruit into their life? Um, we can see from here that Indonesians think that this type of fruit is very versatile because it does stretch across um, multiple um, occasions. And um, Indonesians were speaking about smoothies, about um, consuming it with dairy products, um, in fruit salads and with other fruits. In terms of format, the individual loose format was by far um, preferred. Um, I guess this way they can kind of pick and choose what they you know, see and, and smell, that whole sensory experience of, of picking the fruit. Having said that, the pre-packaged bags and so forth were also quite popular formats. So just in summary, this is the final slide. We kind of look at all of the benchmarks as well as the preference between the products to say where are the opportunities for summer fruit in this market. And you can see there's a lot of ticks in the table, which is always good news. Um, we could you know, proceed with most of the fruits that we um, tested, maybe not for the, the yellow nectarine that, that bombed uh, really um, compared to some of the other products. And we've also indicated there which where the kind of preference lies as well. So lots of opportunities. Opportunity. We've learned a lot about that market in relation to the fruit that we um, put in there to test. We learned that they love Australian fruit and they're ready to, to buy it at the right price. And we know how it kind of figures into their lifestyles as well. So a really great project and um, hopefully we can present to you on the pair work that just um, finished up as well soon. Thank you. Thank you.